But we are now interested in the big Dajjal, the final Dajjal. And there are, before we get to the ahadith about Dajjal, there are two interesting aspects that are found in hadith literature that confuse the average reader. And in fact, they even confuse some of the Sahaba. So there still remain elements of confusion about the issue of Dajjal. The first of them was that there was an individual who lived at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu whom even the Prophet for a period of time didn't know, is he that Dajjal or is he a minor Dajjal? Okay, he didn't know. And this incident is mentioned in Sahih Muslim and many books of hadith. It is an authentic incident. Multiple narrations exist about a certain young man who lived in Medina, who was from one of the Yahudi tribes. And he was a sorcerer. He had a alaqa, a connection with the jinn. He would call the jinn. And he was a magician. And he would pretend he knew the future. And he would foretell the future. You know, in English, we call them a soothsayer. He would foretell the future. And in our religion, anybody who pretends to know the future is a liar. And in our religion, anybody who invokes the jinn and calls out to the jinn, this is a magician. We don't call out to the jinn. We don't do anything for the jinn. And perhaps in another lecture, I'll talk about this reality of how mankind has a relationship with the jinn, which is a very scary and interesting and deep topic. And all of our men and women love talking about the issue of jinn. Jinn stories are swapped at night when the hours become in the wee hours of the night. It becomes common to swap ancient jinn stories. And inshallah, one day I'll give an academic lecture. What is all of this? Is there something called jinn? Is there something called magic? And inshallah, we'll explain at that stage. For now, realize that it is possible for evil people to invoke the jinn. It is possible. And when they do so, this is what we call magic. And that's why magic is haram. It is always haram to invoke the jinn. Because they are wanting nothing but evil. Whoever does so must sacrifice tawheed and get involved in shirk. Because the payments that jinns accept, evil jinns, because you have good jinns as well, the payments that jinns accept is what? Do you think they will accept your American Express? Do they care about dollars and cents? What is the currency you will give the jinn? Your worship. That's the only thing the jinn wants. The jinn doesn't care about your credit score. He doesn't care about your credit cards and your money. What will the jinn do with credit cards and money? What does the jinn want? The same thing he wanted, Iblis wanted. That ana khayrum min. I am better than this creation. Let this creation bow down to me. Let this creation worship me. And if the jinn gets this, in return, the jinn will do some favors for you. Right? We'll go and tell you something that whatever. So we'll talk about that when we get to it. So there was this magician at the time of the Prophet ﷺ by the name of Safi ibn Sayyad. That was his name. Safi ibn Sayyad. And some say his name was Abdullah ibn Sayyad, but his name was Safi. Safi ibn Sayyad. And he was from one of the Yahudi tribes who remained living in Medina for a number of years. Not all of the Jewish tribes were expelled. Some small families remained. And he was from of those tribes that lived on the outskirts of Medina. And when our Prophet migrated to Medina, Safi ibn Sayyad was a young child and he was about to reach puberty. And that's when, and so he's around 13 years old. And that's when our Prophet begins interacting with him. And there are a number of interesting narrations about uh, Safi ibn Sayyad. Of them is that uh, the Prophet wasallam heard that there is this young child who has these visions of the jinn. He predicts the future. And so Umar and the Prophet Sallallahu this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, they walked towards a group of children who were playing and amongst them was Safi ibn Sayyad. And Sa ibn, ibn Sayyad is his name. And that's, he's called in hadith literature Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad was not aware that the Prophet ﷺ was coming until he was right behind him. And Ibn Sayyad turned around and the Prophet ﷺ was there. So the Prophet ﷺ said to Ibn Sayyad, Do you testify that I am Rasulullah? Do you testify I am Rasulullah? And Ibn Sayyad said, 
I testify that you are the Rasul of the Ummiyeen in a derogatory manner. You are the Rasul of the unlettered people. You're not Rasul to me, you're Rasul to the unlettered folk. So, the Ibn Sayyad then said to the Prophet ﷺ, and he's 12, 13 years old, look, he said, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? What did we say? One of the signs of a Dajjal is what? Dajjal claims he is Rasul. Right? So he is now saying, and look at the arrogance. And this also shows you that this is what happens when you start getting involved in, in magic. You really become a very evil person. How dare in front of the face of the process and you are twisting the question and you're saying, okay, you ask me, now let me ask you, do you testify that I am Rasulullah? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Amantu Billahi wa Rasulihi. I believe in Allah and His Messenger. That was his response. And he said to Ibn Sayyad, what do you see? What do you see? What visions come to you? Ibn Sayyad said, I see two people come to me. One of them tells the truth, one of them tells lies. The Prophet ﷺ said, rather, the matter has been made confusing for you, meaning both of them are telling lies. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, I have a test for you. I have hidden something for you. And what was that thing that he was hiding? He was hiding a verse from the Quran, which is, uh, 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 um, what's the half here? Fantadir hatta. What is it? Yes, what is the beginning of it? My mind is a little bit awkward because of the Hajj. I'm still not fully recovered. Fartaqib yawma ta'ti as-sama bi dukhanin mubin. Fartaqib. I'm saying fantadir. Fartaqib yawma ta'ti as-sama bi dukhanin mubin. Okay? So the Prophet had recited this verse to the Sahaba. And he's saying, I'm holding, I'm testing Ibn Sayyad. He says he knows ilm al ghaib He says he knows everything. Okay, I just recited this verse. Let's see, does he know did I recite this verse or not? You see the test, right? And by the way, any person who charges you $5 an hour to predict the future is betraying his own lies when he's forced to charge you $5 to predict the future. If he knew the future, he would be investing in Bitcoin and the stock market and become multimillionaire instantaneously. The fact that he has to charge you $5 to read your hand, the fact that you have to call in $3.99 per minute to predict the future indicates what a liar that person is. Is that clear what I'm saying, right? So the process is testing. This is a man, he is claiming he knows ilm al ghaib he knows everything. Okay, I just recited a verse 20 feet away from him. Let's see whether he can tell his followers what I just recited to all of you. Simple test, right? فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانٍ مُبِينٍ He had recited to Umar ibn Khattab. Now he goes to Ibn Sayyad and he says to Ibn Sayyad, I have a test for you. Do you know what it is? Do you know what I have hidden for you? And this shows you, Ibn Sayyad did have contact with the jinn, but the jinn are not all knowledgeable. All he could say was duh, duh, duh. And the verse was Fartaqib, right? Fartaqib yamata biduhanim mubin. And the jinn narrated two letters, duh, 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 and not the whole verse. The whole verse. You see that, right? So there was some jinn that was communicating with Ibn Sayyad. And he wasn't able to do it. So the Prophet said, Ikhsa ya adu wallah. And Ikhsa literally translates as shut up. It is a harsh word. Ikhsa, the English word is shut up. And the Prophet was never harsh except to those who deserved it. Ikhsa ya adu wallah. Shut up, O enemy of Allah. Falan ta'adu wa qadra. You shall never go beyond your meagerness. You think you are so big, you're never going to go beyond this. Umar ibn Khattab said, Ya Rasulullah, allow me to execute him. This is a, a, a Dajjal. He says he is Rasulullah. He is communication with the jinn. His penalty is execution. Ya Rasulullah, allow me to execute him. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If he is that Dajjal, you shall not be able to kill him. And if he is other than that Dajjal, your killing won't benefit anyone. He's nothing. It's going to go away. Right? Leave him be. Now, this hadith is inside Muslim, so authentic. Now, if he is that Dajjal, you shall not be able to kill him. Why? Because who shall kill that Dajjal? Isa alayhi salam. No one will be able to kill that one. So the Prophet is telling Umar, if he is that Dajjal, you won't be able to kill him. And if he is other than that Dajjal, yeah, what's the big deal? He's going to come and go, no one will care. Your killing will not 
harm any or benefit anyone. He's going to be a minor, which was the case. He became a footnote in history. Majority of Muslims don't even know about his name, even though during the time of the Sahaba, he was somewhat of a big deal. Somewhat. In the sense, we don't know his state, as we're going, as we're going to uh, come to. So this is one hadith about Ibn Dajjal. Another hadith, uh, sorry, Ibn Sayyad, sorry. Another hadith is that once the Prophet ﷺ uh, went to go test Ibn Sayyad, went to go test Ibn Sayyad, and he walked towards his house with some of the Sahaba, and he hid behind some date palms, trying to see uh, Ibn Sayyad uh, in a way that Ibn Sayyad would not see him. But Ibn Sayyad's mother saw the Prophet ﷺ in the distance, so she shouted out, Ya Safi, O Safi, watch, be careful. His mother was on the side of, obviously, the mothers typically side with their sons, even in Batil, unfortunately, this is human nature. So the mother is saying to Ibn Sayyad, Ya Safi, that's his name, or Ya Saf. She cut out the Ya uh, out of love, it's called in Arabic, Bab al So she said, Ya Saf, look, there is Muhammad, Rasulullah. So he turned around and he saw the Prophet ﷺ and there was again some conversation that did not result in anything uh, fruitful per se. And that Ibn Sayyad, he continued to live in Medina after the time of the Prophet ﷺ and he resided in Medina and a number of Sahaba swore by Allah that that is the Dajjal. And they considered Ibn Sayyad to be that Dajjal. And of them was Umar ibn Khattab. He would make halaf with Allah that that is the Dajjal. Also Jabir ibn Abdullah, the famous Sahabi, he felt that that is the actual uh, Dajjal. And a number of other famous uh, Sahaba. Nafi' said that I heard my master ibn Umar. Uh, ibn Umar is, is of course the son of Abdullah of, of Umar al-Khattab. So Umar and his son Abdullah ibn Umar, obviously of the same family, they both thought Ibn Sayyad is that uh, Dajjal. Nafi' is the famous slave of Ibn Umar who was freed by Ibn Umar and he became a great scholar. And Ibn Umar died and Nafi' became the Shaykh of Medina. And Malik ibn Anas came, studied with Nafi' and so the golden chain which you should all know, Malik ibn Anas from Nafi' from Ibn Umar. This is one of the most famous isnads of Islamic history. And Nafi' was nothing other than a servant, a slave whom Allah honored with knowledge. This is what knowledge does. He was purchased as a young child as a slave but he was eager for Islam he memorized the Quran he memorized hadith and therefore every book of hadith has Malik from Nafi' from Ibn Umar so Nafi' said I heard my master Ibn Umar say Wallahi I have no doubt that Masih al-Dajjal is Ibn Sayyad he's making halaf because he heard it from his father so Umar and his son Ibn Umar they felt that Ibn Sayyad is none other than that al-Dajjal and there's a famous narration as well that is mentioned in Sahih Muslim that once Ibn Umar met Ibn Sayyad in the streets of Medina and he had a fight with him, verbal fight. And he made Ibn Sayyad very angry. And Ibn Sayyad walked away stomping, very angry. So Ibn Umar then visited the house of his sister Hafsa, our mother Hafsa. And Hafsa heard the news that Ibn Umar and Ibn Sayyad had a confrontation in the bazaar, in the public sphere of Medina. This is after the death of the Prophet ﷺ. The news spread that Ibn Sayyad and Ibn Umar, they had it out. They were shouting and screaming. Ibn Sayyad left stomping and angry. Hafsa said to her brother that, what is the matter with you and Ibn Sayyad? Why do you have to interfere with him? Why are you getting involved in this issue? Don't you know that the Prophet ﷺ said, so this is a hadith now, that the Dajjal shall come and appear after something has caused him to become angry? Meaning, why are you poking him? Why are you prodding him? Why are you getting him angry? What is your business with the man? Let him be. We don't want the Dajjal to come when he's alive. Which means even Hafsa might have been sympathetic that Ibn Sayyad is who? Is that Dajjal. And that's one family, Hafsa, Ibn Umar, Umar. They're one family and they thought that Ibn Sayyad is the actual, is the actual uh, Dajjal.